This is my little review of the game book from Ninty Media. I bought this book through Kickstarter and as a matter of fact, it was the very first time I'd ever bought anything through Kickstarter and everything went really well. Uh, the project was funded and the book shipped with no delays. Now I do have some issues with the book, but ultimately I am satisfied with my purchase. So first of all, the build quality and print quality of the book itself is superb. Uh, it feels great, it looks great, it opens great, it's really nice. Uh, next, the art is phenomenal. Uh, there is the minimalistic black and white cover art, there is high quality photographs of Game Boy hardware, there is cartoon art, comic book style art, art that looks like paintings, art that looks like it could have come from Nintendo themselves. Uh, there's screenshots, box art, art made from the graphics in the games. All of the art is full page and all of it just looks wonderful. The book is arranged into three basic sections. Uh, the first part is an introduction to the Game Boy, uh, the history of its creation, and the people that were involved. It talks about the different Game Boy models, the accessories, uh, about modern homebrew Game Boy games, and a whole lot more. Uh, there's even a section on counterfeit games, which I thought was pretty neat and very relevant in modern times. <laughs> now, as I expected, I already knew most of the stuff in this section, uh, but there was also stuff I didn't know, which was really fun to read. In the next section, the authors picked around 15 of the most notable Game Boy games and wrote detailed write-ups about them. Uh, this includes some history, some personal experiences, and details about the games. This is a nice section. It's like you get to reminisce with an old friend about all the fun you used to have playing these games as a kid. The last section is 100 pages filled with various Game Boy games uh, with shorter write-ups about them. Some of the games listed in this section are well known, uh, some are lesser known, and some are just random games that the authors happen to grow up with. Once again, it's fun to hear people talking about their memories with the games from their youth. Uh, the book is around 280 pages long. Uh, it has a great variety of topics on a variety of games and Game Boys, uh, all bundled together with page after page of uh, really wonderful art. Now, I mentioned there are some issues in the book. Uh, the first type of issue is what I would call a grammatical oddity. Uh, I haven't found anything that was grammatically incorrect, it's just sometimes kind of odd. Uh, for example, this sentence says, Nintendo weren't the only company that had portable gaming at the forefront of their thinking in the 1980s. And so I'm thinking to myself, oh cool, they're going to talk about the Sega Game Gear. But then the sentence just continues by saying, there were others also trying to get involved in the market. And I pause and I think, I know. You just told me in the first half of the sentence. Another example, a new paragraph begins by talking about the Sega Game Gear. The launch price was cheaper than the Lynx, but more expensive than the Game Boy. Which is interesting information about the Game Gear. Uh, but then the sentence continues, and the Game Gear would go on to sell over 10 million units worldwide. Ooh, that's a completely separate thought crammed into another sentence? Uh, now I want to emphasize that <laughs> I'm really nitpicking here, and once again, there's nothing wrong with how it's written. I even considered cutting this part out of my review, uh, but I decided to leave it in because as I was reading through the book, these little oddities popped up again and again, and each time they would cause me to pause as I took a moment to process it. I don't know, maybe I'm setting my expectations for the writing too high because I find the art and the topics and the build quality so high. Or maybe I'm just too picky, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see, another thing that bothered me is what I call poopin. On occasion, an author will poop on the Game Boy or <laughs> on a Game Boy game. Uh, the most prominent example is in the section about Super Mario Land 2. The writer spends most of the time talking about how incredible this game is, and it's a lot of fun to read. But then right in the middle of it, there's a couple of paragraphs talking about how the previous game in the series, Super Mario Land 1, was crap. And this is just a few pages after I got done reading about how incredible the first game was. 
it's just something I would have done differently. I didn't get this book to hear about how the toys I loved as a child and still enjoy playing are crap. Also, <laughs> maybe sometime I'll share my opinions about how Super Mario Land 1 is actually the better game of the two. Alright, the last type of issue is factual errors. So after reading through the first section, I decided to skip ahead to read the detailed write-up of my favorite Game Boy game, Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Unfortunately, I found something that just wasn't quite accurate. I'll never forget entering a room only to see a Metroid consume an alien and evolve into an Alpha Metroid. The problem is, this never happens. I assume it's referring to the first Metroid encounter, where you see an Alpha Metroid hatch out of a shell. Although you do see a Metroid consume an alien in the sequel, Super Metroid, for the Super Nintendo. So I think to myself, huh, well that's too bad. Oh well, it's just one mistake. So I keep reading and got to this part. Very quickly, you find the Power Ball upgrade, allowing her to crouch down and transform into a ball. Uh, it's never called the Power Ball. It's only ever referred to as the Morph Ball, or in the first game, the Maru Mari. But regardless, you don't find the Morph Ball in Metroid 2. You start the game already with it. And it just kept going, error after error. The screw attack deals mass damage to enemies, but you can also use it to pass over the top of huge caves. The item that provides this ability is the space jump. A dead end can even become a ladder with it. That's the spider ball. Your basic arm cannon is fine, but adding the charge shot makes it into the ultimate mounted blaster of your dreams. There is no charge beam in Metroid 2. It was introduced in the sequel, Super Metroid. The ice beam opens new doors. No, no it doesn't. Then you have the Spazer laser beam, which annihilates all life it touches with a crazy spray from Samus' arm cannon. This is sort of correct, but it really sounds like it's referring to the plasma beam, especially since the author mentions every other beam in the game, but not this one. There's also this part in the write-up of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening that says, Madam Meow Meow knows the perfect reward for such a kind hero. <laughs> and I start giggling because the re reward you get is, of course, a big wet kiss. Uh, but the book says, a can of dog food. Which is kind of funny because you can learn how to get the dog food by turning the page and looking at this cute drawing. <laughs> now, most of the information, by far, in this book is accurate. Uh, but it was disappointing to find so much that was inaccurate, especially about some of my favorite games. In summary, despite some odd editing choices here and there, and some inaccuracies, uh, I don't regret buying this book, considering the excellent build quality, and the beautiful artwork, and the entertaining choice of topics. Uh, but I hope there will be more attention to detail in their future books.